where there is proper politics, populism loses. Those are the words of the president of the European Union Parliament, Antonio Tajani, as his reaction following the election of Emmanuel Macron as president of France, who was equally inaugurated last week at L'Elysée as outgoing French president Francois Hollande left the office. His reaction was a semblance and a logical mental calculation of most European leaders since the heart at the French presidency, someone who is pro-Europe after a crushing defeat of the far-right candidate Marie Le Pen. So, was France the only surviving force to quench populism in a world which is rapidly changing? My guest today on Globe Watch is one of Canada's most respected and refined intellectuals, one time journalist, an author, one time diplomat, one time lecturer, one time human rights advocate, and one time the pioneer secretary general of the Intergovernmental Agency for La Francophonie, which is simply today the International Organization for La Francophonie. Jean-Louis Roy, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you very much. Frankly speaking, when Emmanuel Macron won the French election to become president, the reaction from Europe was like when the Israelis had manners from heaven when they were in the wilderness. Well, that's a perfect translation of the mood. Well, you know, this election, well, that's an important election, but it's um, an element, just a significant element of um, the adjustment that we all have to do because of the changing, deep change of, uh, of the world today. You know, the problem is not that France made a good choice. The problem is what the European will do to reconstruct Europe that is down now, really down. We don't know that. It's not just an election. It's, uh, as we say in French, a chantier. It's a huge, huge work that they have to do to give to Europe again a decent place in the international politics, business, finance, and all that. The world is now the Asian uh, construction. You know, we have in the last uh, 25 years, we have seen a shift, a spectacular shift of the wealth of the world to Asia, to China, Indonesia, Malaysia, India. That's number one. And uh, everything has changed because of that. They have the money. They have not the capacity to produce wealth. They have the capacity to make uh, research at the level of the United States or Europe, and they are investing all over the place, including uh, in uh, in Africa. I was in recently in South America. The Chinese are everywhere. They are everywhere even in Southeast Asia. They are now uh, very important partners in this part on this view of the African. That's number one. The change. The other one is the digital. We are now in the digital age. This is quite new, 25 years. You know, in 2000, there was 300 million um, people who were connected. Uh, now, it's 3 billion, 700 million. And in 15 years, it will be 5 billion. It's a deep, deep change. Then, the shifting of the wealth and the, the extent of the digital civilization, digital humanity. Of, 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 of That's course. huge things. Of and course. Europe and the French election, we have to look at it in that context. Context accepted. But what could have happened to the European dream, to the European institution, to the ideas of Jean Monnet, of Winston Churchill, 
of the Gaspari and others if France fell to the American trap? What would have happened? To the what? American trap? Trap of populism coming to power. You know, it did not happen. Then we don't know what will have been exactly the consequence of all that. But what we know is that um, Europe is in an extraordinary difficult situation. And uh, it's, a, it's, just, a just good, it's just, good news. Just hang on. When you say Europe is in a difficult position, what do you mean by that? Well, because the, the number two economic power in Europe decided to quit because the Brussels is not negotiating with, with Poland and Hungary. Do, do, they want to quit also because the, all surveys indicate that the Europeans, the citizens of Europe, those who this huge political entity was supposed to help being, well, uh, happier and have good jobs and all that, uh, are not happy with uh, this uh, uh, not you're talking about this the policies curious of structure. It's immigration. Curious yep. Is that what you're talking about, the policies well, of you immigration? Know, you know, immigration was just at the beginning of that. Just think that in 30 years, this continent will have 2 billion, 300 million people. One human being on four will be African. If we don't invest here, if we don't in invest hugely, if Africa fail, look at what will happen in terms of immigration. You know, the immigration, it's not the decision of this government or that government. That's people who couldn't find decent ways to, for, for themselves and the kids uh, who saw that there is no future for them, uh, they decide to move. And they do that in the world today, in South America, in Asia, in Africa, by tens of thousands of millions moving inside the continents or from one continent to the other one. The question of the immigration, it's not the little things that we saw, even if it is quite uh, spectacular in terms of, uh, you mentioned human rights, what we saw in the Mediterranean Sea. You know, we never saw that prior to the last uh, 15 years. An element of truism that power, the global balance of power, is gradually moving to quickly Asia. Moving. Quickly moving. Quickly moving and very fast to Asia with the Chinese pumping billions and billions. In fact, the Chinese president has just announced 124 billion of international trade investment. And he have this money. And he has <laughs> this money. But we are not seeing a corresponding attitude from the transatlantic bloc. You know very well that... Because the, this bloc is poor. You know, yeah, there was a shift. Really? There was a shift of... Yes, there was a shift of, of money. Uh, you mentioned figures, huge figures, huge sum of money. Capacity to produce wealth is not anymore the, the, the fact of this small part of the world that is the United States of America and Europe. You're talking about 800 million so you, you mean to tell, you, you, you mean to tell me that the transatlantic community, which you master so well after being so many years there as a journalist, as a diplomat, this is an environment you know so well. You mean yep. to tell me that this community are no longer serves as the warehouse of the world? No. In terms of values and productivity? No. Europe is not anymore. Uh, and Europe had this, that capacity in the last decades. That's not uh, its, uh, its capacity anymore. That's why they have to look at, at themselves and find new ways to rebuild their their capacity in order to play again a certain role in, in world affairs. The same for the United States. What do you think? The, the, those 61 million Americans who vote for the new president of the United States, why, why did they choose that man? Why in Europe, the European population, as we just mentioned, are so um, desperate and uh, did not find Roughly any... 500 million dose of the yeah, European Union bloc. That's, be that's because in Europe and in North America, I am a North American, we are now discovering poverty at the level that we never 
experience prior to the last years, shift of wealth means something. But you, you, it means you, that million, you, you, million of jobs, you, you, well-paying you, you, jobs, were, were low, lost. You know what lost? some people would tell yeah. you? They would tell you that the only element left for these new guys you are talking about who are coming to power in the Western Hemisphere is the element of pathos in politics. Lies telling, fake news, blackmailing of their opponents to present themselves as real people. And when they come to office, they have no strategy, they have no point. You are very much aware of the fact that there were wrong figures presented to the British public by you keep Nigel Farage that yep. the British people pay at least 350 million pounds every month, which was supposed to be used by the NHS for the European Union project. And that was a fantastic lie. This is the only area they succeed. Now, we, well, uh, <laughs> if you're right, and I think unfortunately you may be right, the, um, the net result of that is the loss of influence by Great Britain, the lust of influence of Europe, the lust of influence of the West in general, and the crisis in which we are is the consequence of what I mentioned, the shift in wealth and this digital uh, age in which we are. You know, in, in uh, well, 15 years, uh, three on five internautes uh, will be Asian. The, um, the market, the consumer market, will switch from the West to Asia largely. The West is aging, and you are, and some part of South Asia are uh, on the contrary road. The, this will be the most uh, young part of, of our world. Would, would, would Everything that, is changing. Would, 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 would we that, cannot talk, at, uh, referring to the world as it was even 15 years ago, it has no significance w anymore. Would that automatically mean that the value system and the way of interpreting principles will automatically change? Because much, well, of, no, human, no, 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 because no, much of human rights, yeah. if power shifts to Asia completely yeah. as it is projected, yeah. well, the traditional words of human rights as perceived by Washington, uh, by Paris, by London, by Berlin, it's would no not longer over. be the same. It's not over, but it has to be completely renegotiated. Completely renegotiated. We cannot say, it's impossible for us to say anymore to the Asian, look, this is the 10, the ten things that you have to do. As we adjust to that, we will be friends, otherwise you'll have problem. They are not in a position to say to us, we have also our list. And we are in a global time, and a global space, and a global humanity. It cannot come only. The global world you are talking about. It cannot about come only from the Chinese. The it the cannot global, come only from The global world you are talking here today is it a unipolar, a multipolar, or a bipolar? Multipolar. Multipolar. Yep. Yep. You have China, you have the West, you have India, you have the Aboriginal people in the world, 300 million, who made. Tremendous gains in the last, uh, well, 25 years. You have uh, Indonesia, you have Vietnam, 125 million people coming out. You still have Japan. You know, it's a multipolar world in which we are. Yep. You were the pioneer secretary general of the intergovernmental agency for yeah. La Francophonie, which of course promotes democracy, human rights, and the rule of law across the globe. I want to understand from your perspective, inside perspective, when Amnesty International states that uh, there has been a rise of hate speech with tremendous global consequences because of statements that come from the president of the Philippines because of statements that come from the president of the United States of America because of statements that come from 10 Downing Street, especially during the brick exit debate. Are you worried by that? No, not really. Because the, the reality of the world... Or, or, or this is another fiction from... Yeah, the, re the reality of the world, the reality of this continent, the reality of your country, the reality of my country is multicultural. 
you, you look you look at any country. When I was the Secretary General of the Francophonie, you just mentioned that, there was only one country on 60, one on 60, who was a new lingual. All the other ones had to manage two, five, ten languages, depending if you're Mauritius or Morocco or Canada or Switzerland or Senegal or Cameroon. You know, the diversity of the world, that's the fabric of humanity. You will not change that. You have to recognize that. You have to find ways. We are entering into a time when this diversity, because of the shift of wealth and all that, this diversity, because of internet also, this diversity now cannot be just put aside. That's where the victory of the new French president is interesting. The French have in the last, well, decades, denied that they are diverse, that they are black also, that they are Arabic also. Oh, you said that France has no culture. He said, no. I said that plusieurs cultures dans la France, many cultures in France. That's a good attitude. That's, that's a fact. That's a recognition but of the you fact. Know, one of the best ways of ensuring the survival of this multicultural and multipolar world you are talking is probably through international cooperation, uh, better expressed by networking in organizations like La Francophonie, the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Foundations, yeah. NATO, are the Commonwealth of Independent States, which is a kind of fabrication of the ex-Soviet Union world. But you see, the new global leadership, especially mm -hmm. the American leadership, says, look, um, NATO is obsolete. We can tear it and destroy it completely. Well, the Paris Peace Agreement, which looks for a global consensus on managing the global environment is bad we should take ourselves off well look NAFTA the North America Treaty no Organization more. the United States is not all is not is that. one man all, who is all now is the bad. president said that but you have Congress you have Senate you have the judicial system in the United States you have the medias you have the public opinion civil society we'll see at the end of the day if you if can just take the French the Paris Agreement and do what you did. I think that the American will stay at this table. He will play a little, a little bit around the... You know, many American states, 51 states in the United States of America, are the leaders in terms of uh, uh, hoping that we'll be wise enough and that we'll work so quickly that we we'll save the planet. They are the leaders. California is a leader. Massachusetts is another one. And there is a long list. This man comes with uh, his list, but he will have to negotiate a lot. And he will have, uh, as we have seen for the immigration, he will have to respect the judicial system. Or he will destroy the institution, or the institution will contain him. Well, you are one of Canada's most refined intellectuals, like I qualified to you at the beginning of the interview. You are a diplomat equally and one of Canada's most celebrated journalists. I just wonder, between the United States of America and Canada is a daily two billion dollar trade flow. Exactly. And tradition has had it that when an American president comes to office, the next and first stopover is in Canada. Donald Trump has not done that. His no, first he foreign trip. To, he will go to. He, he will go to other countries before coming Saudi to Canada. Saudi Arabia first. Are you shocked by that? Well, you know, the president of the United States or the prime minister of Canada <laughs> can decide by himself. We're not shocked because he will decide to go there instead of coming to Ottawa first. But we are very, very um, surprised by the um, incapacity, our new incapacity to read what this guy wants really, will do, wants to do with the Mexican and us between the United States, between Mexico and Canada, which is a huge country. Wait, 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 wait a minute, to my ordinary Cameroonian audience that doesn't really understand what is going on between the United States of America today, Mexico, and Canada. In 
in as much that's, as... That's, uh, that's as, so as, an academic union between yeah, the yeah, trades. Yeah. What actually will happen if NAFTA is renegotiated? It will be renegotiated. We'll see the result. We cannot know prior to the negotiation. But the president said many, many times that NAFTA was the worst economic or commercial uh, uh, agreement that this country, that the United States, never signed. True or false? What does it mean? True or false? False. Completely false. Completely false. President Trump says that the United States has been cheated over the years when it comes to trade deals and Why balance of payments. And for example, he says, the balance of payment deficits between the United States of America and Germany, for you example, is over $60 you know why? billion. I'll tell you dollars. why. That's and this, and that's that, this cannot continue. You're right saying that, but I will tell you why. Because the American business community in the last 25 years have decided to move their capacity to produce and to research all over the world because it was cheaper to produce in China, cheaper to produce largely in Asia, in Latin America, and millions of jobs were lost in the United States. Millions of um, revenue that was coming because it was selling blah, blah, blah all over the place, uh, they lose it. That's largely the fault. You know, when I look at Cameroon close to Nigeria, we are in the same situation. Canada in the States and you in Nigeria. We need those huge markets close to us like that. Traditionally, when Washington speaks, Paris speaks, London speaks, the whole world has spoken. Look at the current configuration of the, our leadership today. Do you think that Donald Trump, Theresa May, Emmanuel Macron, and Putin is a replay of the 2001 match of Bush, of Tony Blair, of Jacques Chirac, and of Putin. You know, on one of the most important decisions made by Bush, Chirac said no, the war in Iraq. Uh, it was a strong decision by Jacques Chirac. Canada and France never uh, accepted to be part of this. Do you think crazy the, the, the young 39 year old Emmanuel Macron will have the courage to withstand the politics of Moscow, the politics of Washington, the politics of 10 Downing Street? Hello? I remind you that the Russians currently have the most experienced foreign well, affairs alone minister, this middle size, Sergei Lavrov. This, this middle sized country that is France alone. Germany is a strong country in the world, strong country in terms of its connection with China, a strong country its connection with Iran, it's a strong, strong country. If France and Germany rebuild Europe together, yes, Europe will be able, not France alone, not Germany alone. Uh, Putin is quite, quite a, a guy to, to uh, manage. Final question, which has to do with the world of journalism, in which you have a huge career. The first and most big story is fake news. Today, one of the benchmarks of the American media, and which to an extent gives a kind of idea of how the media regulates and controls public leaders in the world, is through questioning and the famous White House daily briefings. Mm -hmm. A tweet from President Donald Trump says that, don't expect accuracy from my surrogates. I may possibly cancel the daily briefings. Is that good or bad news to journalism in the world? Well, considering the quality of the briefing that they are now in the White House, you know, but well, to, to be, to be uh, clear with you, it's completely, irresponsible, com completely also impossible, I think, um, considering what, is the United what are the United States today to decide that the President of the United States will not anymore, or those who speak for him, will not anymore 
uh, brief the, the medias. Well, you know, there is a war going on from the White House trying to put all those medias that are uh, identified with the enemies uh, to the place. Who but is the is, enemy but here? The, well, from the White House, medias are the enemies. Oh. Look at what the president said about the medias. But there is a huge reaction, public reaction, medias reaction, other uh, level of government reaction also, uh, saying this is not the future of this country. We will have, we'll see what after the tempest, what we, we can do, but we will have to rebuild a decent, normal relation between those who are in charge of public affairs, public policy, and those who are in charge of letting the world know what is going really, uh, what is really going on in, in, in the, the states and in the world. The former Secretary General of the Intergovernmental Agency for La Francophonie, which is simply today the International Organization for La Francophonie and Cardinal's intellectual, Jean-Louis Roy, thank you very much indeed for being guest on Global Watch. Thank you to you. You're welcome. Merci beaucoup.